Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Episode Wayne Gretzky, number 99. Hockey Moms, happy Mother's Day. Here's to you. Presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we turn up the gratitude dial, give some thanks to all the moms out there and begin this conversation. If you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person, off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's SweetHockeyCoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. Today is a special day where we get to recognize a group of individuals who take on one of the most noble purposes, and that purpose is motherhood. When the decision is made to take this hero's journey, it's an all-in proposition, meaning when it begins, there's no turning back. This committed class of to-be moms know that they have to burn the ships because the adventure always moves forward, this becomes their new number one thing above all else, and their life as they once knew it will soon be changing forever. This episode is my attempt to give thanks and praise to all you moms out there that bring the sunshine into this world. But before we dive in, do you know how and when Mother's Day became Mother's Day? I certainly didn't until I started working on this script, and wow, there's a story behind it. Personally, before I started doing some research, I thought Mother's Day was a day that was created by some marketer he came up with to sell more cards, vacations, chocolates, and wedding rings. I was wrong, and I apologize, like way wrong. Here's what I found on the old internet. Mother's Day is a holiday honoring motherhood that is observed in various forms throughout the world. The modern American version of Mother's Day has its origins in the early 20th century when Anna Jarvis campaigned for a national holiday to honor mothers after her own mother's death. Her efforts led to President Woodrow Wilson signing a proclamation in 1914 recognizing the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. The holiday has since become a global celebration with different countries celebrating on different dates and with their own customs and traditions. I grabbed that from the Mother's Day Wikipedia page. Thank you, Anna Jarvis, for making honoring your mother your life's mission. If I reflect back on my childhood, adolescence, the teenage years, and a lot of my adult life, if I've ever had something challenging going on, I'd never call or reach out to my best friend, my brother, my sister, my dad, coach, or teacher. Nope, the one person I'd either call or drive over to her house, and that's the house where my mama lives, for a hug and a chat. No matter how bad it seemed, or how far away a solution to a problem was, my mom could always make things a little better, to where I could push on and take the next few steps in the right direction. It's like moms somehow have a special superhero power that can improve almost any situation. But it wasn't until I got married, and my wife and I had a couple kids, well, actually, I didn't do much in that operation. Did I really get a glimpse under the hood to how unique, uncommon, and committed moms are to being a mom? Though before the new arrival greeted us, there were times during my wife's first pregnancy where I didn't know if she was going to be a good mom. But as I reflect back, her short, non-positive parenting outbursts were usually right after she had thrown up because of morning sickness. <laughs> But once the new team member becomes active on the roster, there's a switch that is turned on between mother and child that is unlike any other between two humans. It's extraordinary and beautiful. Once us dads witness this specialness for the first time, we immediately know that if push came to shove and the kid had to pick one or the other, mom or dad, mom gets picked all day long. <laughs> so, 
Let's make this day hopefully a little more special by letting me tell all you moms out there how exceptional and talented you are and how exclusive the Mamahood Club is. Let me start by asking all you non-moms out there that have a mom, how many words can you come up with that would describe all of the job requirements of motherhood? Have you ever tried it? I never had. So this was a great exercise in reflection to really block out everything and dive into remembering all the hats your mom has worn over the years. Here are the words that I came up with that describe motherhood, my mom, the mother of my boys, and all of you moms out there too. So here we go. Motherhood is a journey of compassion, selflessness, patience, support, resilience, and sacrifice. A mother is caring, loving, nurturing, empathetic, protective, understanding, and generous. She is also strong, wise, influential, inspirational, reliable, and faithful. A mother is creative, skilled and hardworking, yet affectionate, doting and dedicated. She is warm, a coach, fierce and intelligent, as well as persevering, resourceful and gracious. A mother is attentive, humble, tenacious, passionate and diligent, responsible, persistent, adaptable and thoughtful. She is self-sacrificing, enduring, dependable, courageous, and unconditional. A kind-hearted mother is also resolute, insightful, humorous, attuned, and disciplined. Moreover, motherhood is empowering, grounded, calm, supportive, modest, visionary, and planner. She is open-minded, pragmatic, self-reliant, consoling, and self-assured. A mother is also affirming, attentive, authentic, confident, engaging, enthusiastic, expressive, firm, forgiving, gentle, giving, graceful, hopeful, imaginative, and joyful. Finally, motherhood is maternal, multitasking, and thorough, as well as trustworthy and unwavering. That was a fun read. I'm sure I missed a lot of descriptive words describing moms, but it's definitely a great list to start with and build on. Moving along, do you remember what I did for the Christmas edition of the Hockey Journey podcast? If not, well, let me tell you. I ended up using a few short stories from the Chicken Soup for the Soul Christmas edition. I had no idea if they had come out with a Mother's Day version, so I did a quick search, and sure enough, there's a Mother's edition of Chicken Soup for the Soul, called Chicken Soup for the Soul, Mother's Soul. Stories to open the hearts and rekindle the spirits of mothers. Here's a couple stories that hit home for me. Story number one, To Read When You're Alone, by Mike Staver. I was 13 years old. My family had moved to Southern California from North Florida a year before. I hit adolescence with a vengeance. I was angry and rebellious with little regard for anything my parents had to say, particularly if it had to do with me. Like so many teenagers, I struggled to escape from anything that didn't agree with my picture of the world. A brilliant, without need of guidance kid, I rejected any overt offering of love. In fact, I got angry at the mention of the word love. One night, after a particularly difficult day, I stormed into my room, shut the door, and got into bed. As I laid down in the privacy of my bed, my hands slipped under my pillow. There was an envelope. I pulled it out, and on the envelope, it said, to read when you're alone. Since I was alone, no one would know whether I read it or not, so I opened it. It said, Mike, I know life is hard right now. I know you are frustrated, and I know we don't do everything right. I also know that I love you completely, and nothing you do or say will ever change that. I am here for you if you ever need to talk, and if you don't, that's okay. Just know that no matter where you go or what you do in your life, I will always love you and be proud that you are my son. I am here for you and I love you. That will never change. Love, Mom. That was the first of several to read when you're alone letters. They were never mentioned until I was an adult. Today I travel the world helping people. 
I was in Sarasota, Florida, teaching a seminar when, at the end of the day, a lady came up to me and shared the difficulty she was having with her son. We walked out to the beach and I told her of my mom's underlying love and about the to read when you're alone letters. Several weeks later, I got a card that said she had written her first letter and left it for her son. That night, as I went to bed, I put my hands under my pillow and remembered the relief I felt every time I got a letter. In the midst of my turbulent teen years, the letters were the calm assurance that I could be loved in spite of me, not because of me. Just before I fell asleep, I thanked God that my mom knew what I, an angry teenager, needed. Today, when the seas of life get stormy, I know that just under my pillow, there is that calm assurance that love, consistent, abiding, unconditional love, changes lives. By Mike Staver. Give me a moment so I can wipe away the tears when I finish reading that. Thank you, Mike Staver, for sharing that gem. I also found an additional diamond in the rough on the page previous to Mike's story. It's an Arab proverb, and it fits perfectly into the storyline, and it goes like this. God cannot be everywhere, so he made mothers. I put a little smiley face at the end there. How great is that eight word combination? So let me read one more here for you quick, if you're okay with that. Well, all right then, I'll continue. Story number two, My Mother Says, by Robert F. Whittle, Jr. My Mother Says, first a quote, Mother love is the fuel that enables a normal human being to do the impossible, by Marion C. Garrity. After graduating from West Point and gaining a commission in the United States Army, I spent several weeks of summer on leave at my family's farm in Mystic, Connecticut. One day at dinner, I spoke to my parents about my desire to go to ranger school that coming winter. I described ranger school to my parents. The Army sends only its best soldiers to undergo the grueling course. There the men receive just one meal a day, sleep two to three hours a night, and carry rucksacks full of personal and squad equipment on 30 kilometer patrols. They learn to survive behind enemy lines and to conduct raids, ambushes, and reconnaissance missions. Usually only one out of three ranger students graduates. My mother's reaction to my intentions surprised me. Instead of giving me her immediate support and encouragement, she hesitated. She wanted to know what the possibility was that I'd be injured. She asked me to explain again why I wanted to go so much. My mother knew that soldiers had died during ranger training in the past. I explained that I didn't have to go to ranger school. It wasn't important or necessary for my career as an army officer. I wanted to go to see if I could do it. Did I have what it took? My mother listened quietly. She didn't ask me any more questions. I knew how she felt, or so I thought. Shortly after that conversation, I left home to attend the Engineer Officer Basic Course, EOBC, at Fort Leonardwood, Missouri. After that course, I would go on to a construction battalion in Germany. During the second week of EOBC, I attended a briefing on Ranger School. At the conclusion of our briefing, the officer in charge broke some news to us that made the odds of becoming rangers seem insurmountable. Out of the 60 second lieutenants in the room, only six of us would be allowed to attend ranger school. Over the next three months, we'd compete in five areas. Physical fitness, land navigation, knot tying, swimming, and academics. At the end, the top six soldiers would go on to ranger school. I called my parents that night. There's only a slight chance that I'll be able to go to ranger school, I said, explaining further about the number of people who wanted to go and how many slots were available. I was sure the news would come as a relief to my mother, but it didn't. In my mother's eyes, something much more dangerous than ranger school was now facing me. My dream was getting out of my reach. 
She moved instinctively to put it back within my grasp. You can do it, she told me. I know how badly you want to go to ranger school, and I know you will go. You'll make it, and you'll graduate. Her words pushed away my doubts and filled me with strength and resolution. Over the next three months, the 60 of us ranger wannabes competed aggressively. I filled my parents in on my progress as the weeks passed. My mother's steadfast encouragement continued. She was unmoved by the odds. She kept saying she knew I would make it. In late October, I was boarding the bus that was taking our class back from a training area. I was running a bit late, so I was the last one to get on. As I climbed the steps, someone from the back shouted, Hey, Whittle, did you get the word? I paused at the front of the bus. A crowd of second lieutenants was staring back at me. Somehow, I knew it was bad news, and I knew it was about ranger school. What? I asked. The commander says that nobody who's going to a construction battalion will be going to ranger school, came the reply. I was crushed. All that work, and now I wasn't going to go? I kept my head up and faced the bus, which was completely silent. Everyone was watching to see my reaction. The first thing that came to my mind was Mom's words. With a grin, I spoke the truth. Well, I guess the commander hasn't talked to my mother yet, because my mother says I'm going to ranger school. Everyone on the bus burst into laughter. Word of my unlikely comment quickly spread through the rest of the staff and faculty. A week later, the commander reversed his decision. Evidently, he didn't want to mess with my mother. The officer in charge announced the results of the competition. I had placed sixth. My mother was right. On November 30th, 1990, I started ranger school, and on March 19th, 1991, I graduated. By Robert F. Whittle, Jr. There you moms go again, being rock stars. Pretty cool story. I bet if all of us think hard enough, we could write a similar story where our mom believed in us when nobody else would, even ourselves. Now, I don't know if there are different classifications of moms and if one designation is a little better than another. For example, is a soccer mom a little better than a basketball mom? Are moms of kids who jump or race horses a smidge better than moms who manage their family of golfers? I have no idea. But what I can tell you is that I've been around hockey moms my whole life. My mom is one. My wife is one. My mother-in-law She's a converted one, and all of you moms of the players I coached over a 17-year time period, Wayne Gretzky is the great one, but hockey moms, you're the great ones. As I begin to wrap this segment up, let me ask you one final question. Have you ever given your mom a card on her birthday or Mother's Day, and after reading it, you thought to yourself, this card says it all? I've written that exact sentence many times in cards I've given to my wife or mom. The other day, I stopped in at the local drugstore, strolled over to the card aisle, started reading a bunch of Mother's Day cards, and here are a couple of my favorites where I couldn't have said it any better. Card number one. For every lesson you taught, toy that you bought, shoe that you tied, tear that you dried, knee that you patched, Sock that you matched, lunch that you made, game that you played. Thanks, Mom. With love, from one lucky son. Happy Mother's Day. And card number two. Thanks, Mom, for raising me with a love I could trust, to never let me down. A love that showed me I was never alone. A love that gave me the strength to grow into the person I was meant to be. I hope you know you're my hero and my life's inspiration, and that I'm so very grateful to have had a mother like you. You deserve all my love and all my thanks today and every day. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Again, I couldn't have said it any better. To all you moms out there, to my mama, to the mom of my kids, I hope you all have the best Mother's Day ever. Know that you're well loved, and are greatly appreciated for everything you do and continue to do on a daily basis. With love and gratitude. Happy, 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 
Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed this Mother's Day edition. If you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, wink, wink, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon. And do me a favor, make as many moms today smile today as you can. All the best, my friends.